I'm going to be presenting a case of an elderly patient with metastatic RCC with multiple cardiovascular risk factors. No disclosures. And treatment of patients with molecularly targeted therapy has raised new challenges in regards to management of associated adverse events. And these toxic events differ from those associated with traditional chemotherapy and warrant special consideration and management. And the point of this talk is to really highlight selected toxicity and highlight adverse events monitoring and management. So we start with a 77-year-old male with multiple medical problems. In 2006, he presents with abdominal pain. Imaging confirms a six centimeter right renal mass without vessel or nodal involvement. He undergoes a right radical nephrectomy showing clear cell RCC, grade two of four, and margins are negative. And he's followed with serial imaging, and in February of 2013, imaging confirmed relapse disease. And you can see here he has bilateral pulmonary nodules and a right hilar mass on CT imaging. He undergoes a CT-guided biopsy of the left lower lobe lung nodule, and here we see um, neoplastic cells with clear cytoplasm that are arranged in nests with intervening um, blood vessels consistent with clear cell RCC, similar to his primary tumor and cells are positive for PAX-8 and negative for TTF-1. In regards to his past medical history, he has a history of coronary disease. He status post MI in 1990, requiring stent placement and five vessel cabbage in 2001. He has um, a AAA and a status post to stent for that. He has hypertension, diabetes, he's not on insulin, has a baseline hemoglobin A1C of seven, and has chronic renal insufficiency with a baseline creatinine of 1.8 to two. His allergies include aspirin, so he can't take aspirin, and his medications are Plavix, Metoprolol, Metformin, Glimepiride, Simvastatin, and Tamulosin, or Tamsulosin. So we had him see um, oncocardiology for follow-up at the DFCI before um, initiating any therapy. He did have a stable blood pressure in the 120s to 70s. EKG showed a normal sinus rhythm, but he did have evidence of prior infarct. He had an echo with a baseline EF of 50 to 55% with some mild anterior septal hypokinesis. His uh, AAA was stable without evidence of endoleak on imaging. And to optimize his cardiovascular regimen, he was started on lisinopril 2.5 milligrams. So we see him in clinic and start him on pazopinib, dose reduced at 600 milligrams daily given his age and comorbidities. And following a month of therapy, he experiences profound fatigue, nausea, and diarrhea, calls our clinic, and we hold therapy. And just a couple of days later, he develops significant hematochesia, is actually admitted to an outside hospital, undergoes a colonoscopy, which shows evidence of ischemic um, colitis. This was suspected to be secondary to dehydration in the setting of low blood pressure and profound diarrhea and nausea, poor oral intake. He couldn't undergo an angiography given his renal function. And this is not this patient's colonoscopy, but a representative colonoscopy of a patient with ischemic colitis. In panel A, you see normal mucosa. Panel B, you see erythematous, edematous, um, erosive mucosa, and the corresponding pathology. You have um, the mucosa is uh, eroded in panel C, and you see this fibroprolent um, exudate in panel D with hyalinization of the mucosa. So um, we see him in clinic a couple of weeks later. Imaging confirms disease response with shrinkage of the pulmonary nodules and the right hilar mass. And we continue to follow him with imaging. And uh, two months from his event, he has a mild progression on imaging. And that, at that point in time, we decide to restart him on Pazopin at 200 milligrams daily. And then um, he's followed again, and one month later we repeat his imaging, and he again has a confirmed response. He's tolerating Pazofine. He continues on therapy at 200 milligrams, mild diarrhea, no fatigue, and a stable blood pressure. And see, here you see his imaging from um, July of 2013, and that was the impetus to reinitiate the Pazopinib, and then confirmed response at, a, at 200 milligrams um, with Im the imaging in August. So um, in summary, treatment with pazopinib warrants special consideration in elderly patients with cardiovascular risk factors. Dose modifications may be warranted and do not necessarily preclude response to therapy. Excellent. And I'd like to acknowledge Tony, Michelle Hurst, our pathologist, Lori Appleby, our nurse practitioner, Javed Mosley, who's our uh, cardio-oncologist that we refer all our patients to. <laughs>